I'm going to show you a Lumina crystal farm and remnant from the ashes. It has a couple of small intricacies, but once it's set up, you can easily return to it for hours at a time without rolling your campaign. This farming method works as of February 2020 after the 8 gig patch that came out. If you've been playing Remnant from the Ashes for a while and you're fully aware of the upgrade system and how to switch to adventure mode, you probably want to skip straight to the farm whose time is shown on the screen now. I don't know about you, but these days luminate crystals are the materials I need the most in Remnant from the Ashes. By the time you've played the game a few times and you've collected quite a few boss weapons like Riven and Spitfire, um, you'll notice that uh, you need, in addition to the standard materials to upgrade them, you'll, you'll see that you need a lot of Luminite to upgrade them. So I've got about, I don't know, 10 boss weapons and each one requires 3 to 12 Luminite crystals for a single upgrade. I'm going to need at least 30 Luminite crystals just to upgrade each of these boss weapons once. Or if I want to upgrade, say, this single weapon to plus 10, I'm going to need about 55 pieces of Luminite. The problem is that the drop rate uh, for the Luminite crystals during the regular gameplay is pretty sparse. This material is dropped only by elite enemies, and even then it's based on RNG. So it'll take a long time to collect this material to upgrade boss weapons, but there are material farms, and I'm going to show you how to get the most out of a particular farm without requiring you to reroll your campaign. There used to be a good few farming areas in the game, but in early February 2020, the game got a big patch, about 8 gigs, at least on the console. You may have seen this farm, for example. This is the floor puzzle near the monolith on ROM. This area has been patched and the elites that spawn when you fail the floor puzzle no longer drops luminite. One of the two important elements to this farm is understanding how adventure mode works. When you're in Ward 13 and you touch the stone, the fast travel menu gives you an option for world settings. Here you can choose to re-roll your campaign uh, and you can also begin an adventure mode. These two modes are mutually exclusive and that's really important to understand. Uh, the game will remember your campaign progress if you choose to activate an adventure. This is really important because we might need to create an adventure on Earth a few times before we get the farming site to spawn. As you can see here, I've got a campaign in progress, and I also have an adventure in progress, and it's the adventure mode that's active. So whatever fast travel choice I make in this menu is applied to whichever game mode I currently have active, which in my case is the adventure mode. The farm site we need is on Earth, so the first thing we are going to do is go to World Settings and select Adventure Mode, and then click X or whatever your button is for Create New Adventure. I'm not going to actually show that right now because I've got my farm set up uh, ready to demo. So go ahead and click the button for Create New Adventure. You'll be prompted to select a world. Make sure you select Earth for your new adventure. And I think at this point, the game displays a reassuring message that your campaign progress will not be affected by starting a new adventure. So having started a new adventure on Earth, go back to the travel menu and click the destination for city. When your adventure starts on Earth, quickly make your way to the center of the map. Don't bother fighting ads or collecting items. Because this game's worlds are procedurally generated, not all items or even landmarks will spawn when the world is generated. On this map, 
the main landmark is either going to be this tree or a crashed helicopter with an old man inside. This tree is the farm site. So if your adventure rolled with this landmark, congratulations, sit tight, we'll start farming in a few seconds. However, if your world rolled with the helicopter, you'll need to go back to Ward 13 and start a new adventure on Earth until you get the tree. Now, here's a quick tip that everyone will use in this farming run sooner or later, whether you get the tree or the helicopter. When you need to get to a travel stone quickly, the best way to do it is to go into your inventory and pick this item called Liquid Death. Now this is a tip not everyone might know because the game misleadingly displays this consumable as a single item. But in reality it's an infinite item that always is in your inventory. I'll demonstrate this later in the video but if your world rolled with the helicopter and not the tree, take your Liquid Death now and it'll put you back to the stone at the start of Earth where you could easily fast travel back to Ward 13. When you're back in Ward 13, start a new adventure on Earth and then repeat the previous steps until you get to this tree. Uh, one final tip about these two landmarks, either the tree or the helicopter. Um, sometimes they are locked on the other side of a locked gate. So as you're making your way to the center of the map, if you are blocked by a locked gate, look through it or over it. You should see a travel stone on the other side and near the travel stone is usually where the tree or the helicopter is. Also, if you hear singing on the other side of the lock gate, it's the old man in the helicopter. So if it is the old man, you know you got to restart the Earth Adventure. If it happens to be the tree, but it's now on the other side of the locked gate, you have two options. You could either re-roll the adventure, or you could make your way through one of the level's dungeons and fight your way through it. And when you exit the other side, you will be on the proper side of the map on the other side of this gate. So, with your map set up right when you finally get to the tree, you'll notice that you can interact with it. Do not talk to the tree. What you want to do is shoot the tree until it starts spawning the first wave of enemies. The tree will also spawn elite enemies. You'll know that an elite enemy has spawned in the area when you hear a screeching sound and that's the enemy that might drop luminite when you kill it. Once the first enemy spawn, stop shooting the tree and make sure you don't kill it, otherwise it stops spawning enemies. Also make sure you don't venture too far away from the tree. Now the tree spawns enemies for a fixed amount of time, approximately six minutes. I'm going to time it on this particular farming run and I'm also going to keep a tally of the elite enemies that spawn so I can establish a rough drop rate for the Luminite. So I'm going to shoot the tree now and then I'm going to speed up the video.
Okay, this farming run seems to be finished. Enemies stopped spawning after about 7 minutes. There are a ton of materials on the ground here. Let's see how many luminate crystals dropped. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now this would be a pretty lame farming site if I could only run it once for seven minutes and collect six pieces of luminate crystal. Uh, but the reason I like this location so much is that you can repeat this farming run from the checkpoint as many times as you like. Now the problem is you can't simply interact with the stone at this point to reset the farm because the game tells you it's not safe kill enemies nearby the enemy that the game is talking about is the tree now there's no point in killing the tree because that doesn't reset the farm either what resets the farm is going back toward 13 then immediately fast traveling back to this checkpoint so how do you access the stone without killing the tree the answer is liquid escape. So kill yourself by going into your inventory, consuming your liquid escape. Remember that you have an infinite supply of this item. I'm going to open up my menu again uh, just to show you that there's still one piece of liquid crystal in my inventory. Right there. Now you can access the stone and travel back to Ward 13. While you're back in Ward 13, check to see if you have an adequate supply of ammo boxes. It's common to run out of ammo while you're doing that farming run. If you need some, this is your chance to go over to Reggie, the vendor here and pick up some ammo boxes care, and then when you're ready all you need to do is go back to the stone and reload from the last checkpoint all right so i fast traveled back to the tree and now you see when i aim at the tree my reticle is green 
This tells me that the farm has been reset because I once again have the option to either talk to the tree or shoot the tree. So obviously at this point I'm just going to shoot the tree again and start my second farming run. Now at this point it's simply a matter of rinse and repeat. The real beauty about this method is that you can keep your adventure mode active and also keep your campaign checkpoint intact while doing this adventure mode farming site. So that's it. I hope you found this video useful. I hope you get a ton of luminite from it and I hope it doesn't get patched anytime soon. Leave still. Uh.